Well, welcome back, Dart family. We are still going through the Dart language tour. We're in the control flow statements today, break and continue. So oftentimes, when you are in a loop, you need to somehow break out of that loop and say, I'm done, we don't need to process anything else. Or you just need to skip over that, that one iteration, that one instance of um, executing the block before you go to the next one. Okay, uh, so there's two key words. They're called break and continue. In the Ruby world, um, so in since Dart kind of takes after the C style languages, it uses continue. Um, the thing in Ruby we use is called next. So here's like a for loop in Ruby. Uh, for i in 0 through 5, if i is less than 2, then next, otherwise uh, print something to uh, the screen. Okay, uh, Ruby also has break um, and return keywords, so there, there's some borrowed uh, similarity there. <clears throat> That's what we got in Ruby. Okay, so we use break to stop looping. Let's take a look at this. I've already copied over a lot of the material we're going to use. Don't mind this candidate class. We're going to use that later. This is the first bit of code that that um, we're bringing over from the language tour documentation. Okay, I did a previous video on while loops, and I demonstrated how if you hard code true as the condition it should, um, it causes your program to hang. Um, it gets stuck in like an infinite loop, okay? And then the dart pad will crash. Uh, but now, if we use break, we're able to control uh, the event, like if that happens. So let's assume that shutdown requested returns true. So we're just gonna hard code that there. We don't have this function defined, so we're just gonna print does this happen? Okay, if we see does it happen, um, you know, it's already telling us that it's we have dead code, it's unreachable. Um, so while true, there should be this infinite loop, but we say, hey, if this condition's true, so let's just say that uh, if two is less than five, which, which it is, um, now what's funny is like, Dart can't pick up that this is still dead code because two and five should be constants, I think, and two is always less than five. Um, so it's not gonna print, does this happen? It's gonna break out. So you can see our, our program didn't hang uh, like it had in the past. Okay. Um, if we make this false, where it doesn't break, this will always be, um, yeah, so now break is unreachable, right? Um, yeah, we're, we're never gonna, we also aren't gonna do this this time because we're, we're not uh, coming out of this, this while loop um, in any way, because that's hard coded to be true. So anytime you need to break out of something, um, you, can, you can say if, if some condition is met, then break. Otherwise, just, just keep doing what you're doing for, for the loop. Um, I thought it was interesting that you could also try to make this as uh, streamlined as possible. And I think this works. So while true, without the curly braces, just putting it on one line, just break. I wanted to kind of minimize the number of uh, keywords and characters to demonstrate breaking out of a while loop. And I think this is it. We could get more technical and uh, you know get rid of the the spaces there, and that should be valid as well. Kind of looks ugly, but uh, it does break out of it. We do get one warning though. Uh, so you see here how we had this if true break on one line, um, and it didn't give us a warning. Um, this info about curly braces for all flow control structures. 
If we go check that out, um, it says use curly braces for all flow control structures. That's going to be your ifs, uh, your else, and I think your, uh, your for loops, your while loops. Um, they're just showing us if statements here. They talk about this dangling else problem. I'm not really sure what that means. I think it's something maybe in the C style languages, so it's not something I'm familiar with. So here you have if, you know, there's your condition, and we're using curly braces. There's your else, there's your curly braces. Uh, they do say there's one exception, an if statement with no else clause, where the entire if statement and the then body, the then body, the, the logic that you're, you're running between the curly braces usually, if they all fit on one line, in that case you can leave the braces off if you prefer. Okay, so like there's if, there's our condition, and return default value. So we didn't have to use curly braces and say return default value. That's when you're able to um, keep it on, on one line like that. And what we do here is, that's why this was okay when it was in the while loop. Uh, to say if whatever the condition is break um, but here uh, the while loop they don't recommend that so only for ifs okay um, yeah because this is kind of a nonsensical loop to have in the first place in your system and anything meaningful probably in a while loop is going to take a couple lines um, okay uh, especially if you're using break so Right, so that's what I wanted to show on that, is how you can break out of a loop. <clears throat> okay, this next part is about using continue. Uh, coming from the Ruby world, this is next, typically. Um, and honestly, in, in Ruby, I, I don't think I've ever used the next keyword. Uh, and that's because Ruby has other ways to iterate over a set of things uh, without... Um, sort of like imperatively saying to either stop the the can you know really control the flow by breaking or or saying next go to the next iteration um, but here is one instance from the C style language where you do have to use continue to kind of filter out or not operate on certain um, certain items in your list, or in this case, candidates. So let's go take a look at this. I've already copied this over. Okay, um, we have, here's the stuff from DartPad. Uh, to make this work, I created a candidate class up here at the top. Uh, so each candidate will have a, a property called years experience. Uh, when we create a new candidate, um, we are requiring that we supply the years of experience. Okay, and these curly braces mean um, that we're going to use keyword arguments or uh, named parameters. So this is kind of like how Flutter does it. Uh, and then there is just a, a single function called interview. Uh, it's in the class, so it's a method at this point. Uh, and all it does is print the years of experience so we know which uh, candidate we're filtering out. Okay, so here's the three candidates that I've uh, initiated that we can play with. Okay, we've got college grad with zero years of experience. Okay, so this is how you create a new one. You can either have that new keyword there, which generates a little warning saying it's unnecessary. That's the older style. Um, but if you're new to Dart, it's good to, to know that that is possible. And the return type is candidate. We could have just said var. It would have done the same thing for our purposes, um, but this is this is a good practice to specify the return type. Uh, the second one is Cobalt Chad. He has 44 years of experience, and then Flutter Brad has four years of experience. Okay. Now we have um, a list. If we wanted to stay with our theme of being specific, we have a list of candidates. Okay, college. Grad, Cobol Chad, and Flutter Brad. They are in a specific order. Um, and then we have a for loop. So we're starting with uh, you know some local variable called i. We're setting it to zero. 
uh, whatever the length of candidates are, we're going to increment by one and then be able to access these elements out of this list using the index value. That's why we're starting at zero. Um, okay, inside our for loop, we're saying, give us our candidate variable here, pull it out of this candidates list using the index. Um, if they have less than five years of experience, go to the next element that we're looping over. That's why Ruby calls it next. Go to the next one. Um, <laughs> so C though, and Dart uses the continue keyword. So we want to continue. Um, that doesn't mean go down here and complete the rest of the block of code. It means really go to the next iteration. Um, again, that's why Ruby is so loved by programmers is it because yeah, a lot of it just like reads very pleasantly. Um, but just know that continue here means jump out of this one, stop executing, don't break the entire thing. Just break this, this one iteration and, and go to the next one if there is one. Okay. Um, so in effect, this line is filtering out college grad and flutter Brad because they have less than five years experience. Uh, the only one that's going to not satisfy this condition, so we will run this interview um, method, is Cobol Chad with 44 years of experience. Okay, so let's run this. Make sure I didn't break anything. Okay, and we're only printing that line. You know, Flutter Brad, let's say next year he has five years of experience, then he would also make the cut. Um, and now, now both of them would be uh, interviewed. Okay, let me change that back to four. Yeah, so there was this way of writing it um, just for fun. I wanted to do a for in loop. So remember we have four, let's say candidate in candidates. Okay, so that reads a little better already. We don't have to worry about setting an index value and incrementing it. We just say for var candidate in candidates so we get that for free, as they say. We don't have to manually or specifically, um, imperatively, like pluck it out of the list of candidates. Uh, and the rest of this should just work still, I believe. Okay, so we filtered out those that have less than five years experience and only Cobol Chad made it through to get, to get an interview. Okay, so that's that's another way to do that. That's that's kind of how we got that. All right, so that was nice. Um, now, yeah, use continue to skip to the next loop iteration. They could have also used the word skip. That would have been cool. Um, but yeah, there's continue. Let me go check out the... Um, I remember earlier there were some keywords and continue was probably one of them. Okay, so that took us down there. Um, I don't know that we have a next keyword or even a skip. Yeah, so it's it's it literally is just um, continue. Okay, so that's that. Um, finally, uh, the the documents say you might write that example differently if you're using an iterable such as a list or a set. Well, lucky for us, we were using a list, weren't we? So uh, let's take this and see what they're talking about. Okay, so let me uncomment this one. This was from the docs. Now, where in this code here do you see the word continue? Because this is all about break and continue, right? Um, you don't see the word continue, but if I run this, you'll see we get the same result. So it's, it's, um, it's acting the same way. Now, the reason is because the, the candidates variable, which is a list of candidates, has access to a method called where. And so where, it kind of has the continue built into it because it's going to filter out the or only select the ones 
right? So it's going to ignore those that don't satisfy this condition. So the years of experience has to be greater than or equal to five. Only where that's true do we then go and interview each of those that satisfy that condition. Um, so that the continue is built into the where method, uh, where we're filtering out beforehand. <clears throat> Okay, very cool. Um, so we were able to run that and we didn't have to use the continue and this is just like in Ruby where uh, in Ruby I might have a, a list of candidates and what these are are usually active uh, record uh, representations of a row in a database. Um, so this, this, we'd have a candidates table, we'd have a column called years of experience, and this, this record in the database table would have a value there. And we would return a set of objects representing uh, that, that record in a table. Uh, and we might say something like, um, I think in, in Ruby it's select. No, actually, so, so in Ruby, if it, if it was a hash, I think we would use select, but it's also called, um, yeah, you could have a list of candidates, and I think you would say where years, and we do snake case in Ruby, where years experience is five. Um, and then we might do something like this. Um, okay, without the, the thing. So this is how it would look in Ruby. We'd say candidates dot where years of experience is five. Um, interview them, or maybe there's a um, maybe the method is written in such a way where you just say interview. Hey, wouldn't that be nice? Um, so it's a lot easier on the eyes than all this syntaxy stuff. Okay, Ruby is beautiful in that way. Cool. Um, so that is it on break and continue. Um, yeah, sometimes you need to stop looping and sometimes you need to skip the current iteration you're on. Um, I don't know if there is a redo. Uh, in, in Ruby there's a thing called redo. Where is that? Yeah, I don't I don't know if Dart has that. Dart redo. Um, block or something like that. Undo, redo. So I'm just going to say dart redo, like continue and break. Is there a redo? I think there's only break and continue. Is there a loop start over? Um, is this for dart? No, this is JavaScript. Continue, break. So it looks like there's they do this in <clears throat> in JavaScript as well. A continue and a break. Um, you know, look at this. So maybe you can reset the counter if you're using a, a for loop. Maybe that's an option. Um, mm -hmm. Continue restart loop. Oh, that's interesting. But again, this is just, I think this is just JavaScript. I don't know that uh, Dart has something like this. Right? Just give us a switch, break stop, loop, Dart flutter, break continue, go to. <clears throat> and I don't know that there's any redo here. If the page would load, maybe we could search everything. There we go. Redo or retry. No. As far as I can tell right now, there's no way to to retry a block. And, and, and the reason you might do that is, let's say that this interview call, instead of just printing something, is, is a, um, a network call. Okay, so we want to maybe go get some data from another web service but that service is down or something, or our connectivity is bad. Um, maybe we want to retry that uh, or redo that, that particular iteration, um, you know, a certain number of times or, or, or whatever. 
Um, so we'll find out if that's possible in the future. But for now, this, this is it. Um, break and continue in Dart. Uh, next time, we will pick up with switch and case um, and then close out the control flow statements with assert. Okay, um, and we may need to use something besides DartPad to do that because um, it doesn't really do anything in, in DartPad. Um, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't cause any errors or anything like that. So um, we will see you then on switch and case. See you later.